Today I'm going to show you the five main things that I use in Photoshop every day. Photoshop is a really powerful program that lets you almost do anything with your photos. It can be quite daunting at times because there's so much to it. But if you just take it step by step and learn one thing at a time, before you know it, you'll become proficient with Photoshop. I use Photoshop pretty much every day, or at least when I'm editing my photos. As I make references to certain techniques in my tutorials, I thought it would be a good idea to show you the five top techniques that I use to make almost all of the changes I need to in Photoshop. Now I do most of my editing in Lightroom, but when it comes to the heavy lifting, I go across to Photoshop. The great thing with editing in Lightroom and Photoshop nowadays is it's non-destructive. So if you make any changes that you later regret, you can go back to the original file and start again. If you bring a photo across from Lightroom to Photoshop, once you've made your changes and save it, it'll save it as a brand new file. So you'll have two versions of the same image. If you've made changes in Photoshop and you don't like it, you can delete it without saving and go back to Lightroom and almost start the process again. As you can see, my Photoshop looks a little bit different to yours. This tool panel normally sits on this side, like so. I prefer having everything on the right hand side. So whenever I go to tools or my layers or any kind of adjustments, everything is on this side. To bring a photo from Lightroom to Photoshop, all you do is right click on the image, go to edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop basically works in layers. What is on top will cover what's below. If you hide, delete or mask out parts of a layer, the layer below will become visible. If you bring one image across, normally it'll lock the layer and call it background. Just click on this little lock icon, that'll unlock it and then hold down Option or Alt, click on it and drag up and this will give you a copy. So as you can see here, I have my original image I have the copy that I made and I've quickly made a white layer on top. If I grab my eraser tool and I make the tool a little bit bigger by using the parentheses, when I delete this layer, you can see the layer below becomes visible. So working in layers is really powerful. You can have parts of the image from one layer and parts of the image from another layer. If you really mess up, there's always Control Z or Command Z. This will undo your last action. And then on a Mac, you press Option Command Z to step back further through the history timeline. If you're on a PC, you press Alt CTRL Z. That'll keep you going back through the stages. The first tool that I'm gonna to show you is the Spot Healing Brush. And it's this little plaster with the little dotted arrows around it. So click on that and we're going to get rid of these paragliders. I'd normally keep them in the shot, but I'm just showing you the use of this tool and how powerful it is. Very quickly, you can get rid of blemishes or anything that you don't want in the shot. If I want to bring them back, I'll click on Command Option Z, which will bring them back. Then say with this little bit of snow, I can get rid of that. So when you zoom out, that snow is no longer there. As you can see, the Spot Healing Brush tool is really good at removing blemishes or little things that you don't want in your image. I sometimes use this to get rid of signposts or lampposts or things like that that I don't want in the image. I don't use it that often, but if I want to clean up the image and take away any distractions from the main subject, I'll use this tool. Sometimes when using this tool, you may clip a contrasting color. If you do this, sometimes it smudges that color into the lighter area. If this happens, you may have to use the clone tool. The clone tool is this little stamp here. So click on the clone tool. What I'm gonna do is just show you on this image here how you can delete or add things to your image. I'm gonna remove this post and this stone here. I wouldn't normally get rid of this post, but I'm just using this as an example. So you press and hold Option or Alt. And this brings up this target selection. So I'm gonna target it next to it, and then I'm gonna start clicking on it. So you can see the little cross is where it's getting the sample from. So it's almost like a manual spot healing tool. If you want to select a new area, 
press Option or Alt, and it'll bring up that target sign again. And then click on your target area, then let go of that, and then just click on the area as normal. As you can see, this part of the water has a gradient on it. So as I clicked up here, and then replace this area here where I duplicated this stone, it's actually put a lighter color there. And this is what you've got to watch with the clone tool. You have to be really careful when there's a gradient color in the sky, or in this case, in the water. So I'm gonna undo that, and then I'll choose an area right next to it. So Option or Alt, select your target, and then paste on that target to the next area. And that gets rid of it. So very quickly, with the clone tool, you can get rid of really stubborn objects that the brush healing tool might not get rid of. The clone tool can also duplicate things. So I'll press the target button option and click on this post. And then I'll paint in another post here. So you can see the clone tool is really powerful as well. I use the brush tool and the clone tool to make all of the little changes I need to. When the brush tool doesn't work, I go across to the clone tool. Say if I want to continue a line through the shot where maybe my tripod has just clipped into the corner of the image, I can very quickly get rid of that with these two tools. Next, we'll look at blend modes and this will show you how powerful layers can be in Photoshop. I picked up a light trail from the Jeeps in front of this mountain and I wanted a streak that runs and follows the route that they take. So I'll select all of the images, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. As there's quite a few layers to load into Photoshop, it may take a little bit longer. So all you do is sit back and wait for all of the layers to load up. You can see all of the images are stacked here on the right hand side in the layers panel. So I've got my sky, and then I've got the light trails. I took eight images and I think I got coverage for all of the light trails to show the exact route of the Jeeps. I also liked how it was lighting up the cone in the middle here. I'm gonna ignore the sky in this image for now because I'll fix that in the next step. With blending mode, I'll click on this top layer that I've got visible. The clean sky image I'm gonna make invisible for now so I'm not gonna work on that yet. I've got this next image selected with the eye on it. All you need to do to make it visible or invisible is click on this eye. That'll make this layer invisible. Clicking on the eye so it's white will bring it back into view. So I've got this layer. I'm gonna click on this area here where it says normal, and then it drops down the blend modes. So I want to lighten this image. So you can see it's just blended those two together. Now I'm going to continue doing this down through all of these images. And as you can see, as I go down through them and click on lighten on all of them, it adds lots of different parts that are brighter than the image below. So as you can see, I've added the lighten blend mode to all of these. What that basically does is bring through from below the lighter pixels. It literally looks at all of the pixels and if the pixel below is brighter, it'll show that one through. If it's darker, it will hide it. When you do click on this blend mode, you can see there's lots of different options. I only tend to use a few blending modes. I'll either use darken, lighten, screen, or some of these down the bottom. You just want to play around with these blend modes and see what they do. The great thing with blend modes is you can turn them off and on. If you don't like what the blend mode has done, you can just click back to normal. But for now with this one, I'm gonna lighten. So now you can see it shows the route at which the Jeeps took. With the sky, it's blended all the stars together as well. Because I did take a few different exposures, you can see there's brighter parts and darker parts. So the stars look a little bit strange. And that's the principle behind blend modes. Darken does the opposite and then screen adds more brightness into it. So if I was to click screen on all of these, the image would progressively get brighter. So if I just change these to screen, you can see it actually adds color and brightness to the image. I don't want too much brightness on it, so I'm gonna change these about a bit. I think that's about right, and that's exactly where I want it. Now to sort out the sky, I'm gonna use masking. 
Masking is a really powerful tool. You can select certain parts of the image to show and certain parts of the image to become invisible. On those invisible bits, the layers below will show through. And the great thing with masking is, even though you're making parts of that layer invisible, you're actually not deleting them. So you could have the same effect with the eraser brush, but then you wouldn't be able to bring any of that back if you deleted the wrong bits. With masking, you can hide and show different parts of different layers. So now I have my light trails on the ground. I want to replace the stars with a better sky. So I'm gonna put this one in instead. So before I put the mask on this layer, what I've done is brighten up that image a little bit. It's a little bit dark compared to the image below. So I put a curves layer on top of it. Now that will affect everything below it. But if you want this layer just to affect what's below it, right click on it and click on create clipping mask. A clipping mask puts this little arrow here what that means is it just affects this layer below. So you can see I've matched up the exposures so they're about the same. So when I blend the sky in, it won't look too different. To make it easy, I'm just gonna merge these two layers and also I'm gonna merge all of these layers. So now I have my light streaks and ground image and I have my sky image. Now I've tidied up the layers pile a little bit. I'll show you what a mask is. If I click on this image down here, that creates a mask on the layer that you have selected. The mask is pure white, so it shows everything on this top image. If I select the mask, select my brush tool, make sure I've got black and white on the palettes here with black at the top. I'm gonna to make my brush tool bigger. You can see wherever I brush, the bottom layer is coming through. If I hold down option and click on the layer, you can see there's three dots where I painted. And you can even paint on the mask itself when you have that selected. Hold down Option or Alt again and click on the mask and the image comes back. Now obviously I don't want to make silly changes like this. So what I'm gonna do is delete these. If I click on X, it switches my palette over and I'm just gonna paint these back to white. As you can see, when I paint over these black bits, it brings the layer back. So nothing is ever deleted. Now, if I just delete this mask, I can also create a see-through mask. So if I hold down Option and click on the Mask tool, now you can see it's brought through a black mask. This has made that whole layer invisible. If I have white selected with the brush tool, I can then paint in the layer above. So you can see I'm bringing back the clean image of the stars. And if we look at that, you can see I've very crudely painted in the sky. Obviously I've missed these bits here, but if we try and paint these in, we can kind of blend it together. Also, if you click up here, you can change the hardness of the brush and you can also change the size of the brush up there. You can also change the flow or the smoothing up here. When you paint with the flow dropped down lower, it'll take longer for the brush to come through. You can also change the opacity so it slowly paints in. If you paint any shade of gray between black and white, it will become more or less opaque. The closer the color in the mask is to white, the more it will show. The closer the color is to black, the less it will show. So as you can see with this image, masking is really great because you can blend images together without the worry of deleting any part of that image. What you want to do is start on two images that have a very similar exposure. Try painting in a different sky on an image or something with a straight horizon that you can blend up to seamlessly. One thing that's great with masks is you can work on how much you want to keep and how much you want to get rid of of that layer that you're working on. Just remember to select the mask and not the image. If the image is selected, you'll start painting on that. And that's what you don't want. So click on the mask, and make sure you have that selected, and then use the X tool to switch the palette around. So say for instance, I'll just color this back. Say for instance, I'm working along this line. I'll click on X to start showing this top good sky layer. And then I'll slowly brush along that line, and then I'll get rid of those streaked stars. Say for instance, I come down here and go too far. I'll then click on X 
to switch my palette around and then I can delete that top layer again in that area where I want the bottom layer to come through. So by a process of deleting or showing that top layer, you can really fine tune this line. The fifth tool I use a lot of is stacking. Sometimes Lightroom won't stack the images that well. When it doesn't, I use Photoshop. I've got four shots from Shag Point in New Zealand. As you can see, I've exposed for the foreground so the shadows aren't being clipped. And then I've got two middle exposures and then an exposure for this sun area here. This image has a really high dynamic range, so I want to merge them in Photoshop. So I'll right click, go to Edit In, Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. Again, because you're bringing across multiple layers, it'll take a while for all of these images to process into Photoshop. So when it merges them, it'll bring you to this page. Just make sure your mode is on 32 bits. If there's things that have been moving in your image, you might have to click on Remove Ghosts. When you blend layers, if something has moved from one shot to the next, you might get ghosting. This is where you might get a slightly see-through object or person in your shot, a bit like a ghost. I didn't have anything moving in there too much in the foreground, so I don't have to click on this. I'm not gonna complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm gonna do this in Lightroom. So the next, I'll just click on OK. Once it's merged them, all you wanna do is save. So click on Command or Control S. That'll save the image and bring it back into Lightroom. You'll know it's brought it through because it'll be called whatever one of the numbers was with edit.tiff next to it. Next, you just wanna edit this as normal. Next week, as so many of you have asked, I'll be showing you how I edit in Lightroom. If I've already released that video, click on the eye in the corner. So you can see layering and stacking in Photoshop is a really powerful tool. As well as blending bracketed images, you can also build panoramas and you can also focus stack in Photoshop. If you're not sure about these and want to learn more, click on the eye in the corner or the link in the description for videos on these certain techniques. There is a bit to them, so they do have their own tutorials. Also with this image here, I've shown you how to layer bracketed images. If you want to learn more about bracketing, click on the eye in the corner. I have a video on that as well. And that's about it. Photoshop is a really powerful tool. Don't feel too overwhelmed by it. Just dive in and try one or a few of these techniques. Before you know it, you'll be using Photoshop all the time. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you next time.